Hi, it's Starnell with Wales and Recipes, and this is my review of the Ninja Combi All-in-One Multi-Cooker Oven and Air Fryer. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Alright, so now that everything's unboxed, let's have a look at the accessories. It comes with a big tray here. Looks pretty nice quality. This is a crisper tray that it comes with for like air frying and such. And then there's the combi pan. This goes down bottom. It'll hold like your fluid and starches and things and we'll get more into that a little later. Also I want to show you, sorry about that, but I want to show you the paperwork. It comes with a manual. It also comes with what they call an inspiration guide. This is really like a recipe book. I don't know why they don't just put recipe book on there because that's what it is. It gives you a bunch of recipes and cooking guides and such. So it's like a lot of pictures. They give you a lot of pictures, a lot of instructions, a lot of charts. Give you a lot of information for how to use it. And it goes up to, well before the pages for notes, goes up to 69 pages of information all about using the cooker here. And then a little kind of like helpful guide here for just putting together combi meals. So a lot of detail there and information for how to use it. Also the power cord, let's talk about that. It is a 34 inch cord. It has a three prong plug so it has the dedicated ground wire and that is my preference. And the cooker is 1700 and I know about polarized plugs and how they work. Just want to point that out for anybody that wants to Try and act like, oh, you should be fine. No, that's, I don't like polarized plugs. I prefer dedicated ground wire. But anyway, the cooker is 1,760 watts. And 1,760 watts is interesting because that is the exact same wattage as the Ninja Speedy. And as I go through this review, any of you who are familiar with the Ninja Speedy, you're going to be hearing a lot of familiar themes because in a lot of ways, the Ninja Combi is a lot like the Ninja Speedy with some differences but a lot of similarities. So we'll get into that later. But the dimensions of the cooker um, that Ninja publishes, we'll do our own measurements, but they say that it's 14.92 inches in length, 15.43 inches in width, and 13.11 inches in height. They say that the capacity is for a six pound chicken or a 10 inch pizza or a five pound roast and uh, they say you can hold up to 24 ounces of pasta f up to four cups of dry rice or up to two pounds of fries so those are the capacity and we'll do measurements of the pan and stuff like that later the weight of the cooker itself is 20.15 pounds. Now the temperature ranges that this cooker can achieve are 90 degrees Fahrenheit up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are the same temperature ranges as the Ninja Speedy. The time ranges are 1 minute to 24 hours. Same as the Ninja Speedy. And they advertise that you can you can do complete meals in 15 minutes. Probably you've heard that with the Ninja Speedy too. Um, it has combi cooker functions and air fry stovetop functions. The combi cooker functions are really like uh, steam cooker type functions. Again, this function with the flip thing here, all very similar to the Ninja Speedy. <laughs> okay. And uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you around the cooker so you can see how things look around it. So let's see here if I can move things around. Alright, so you see you got like vents up top. On the side that's probably an exhaust vent. Kind of like the Speedy had an exhaust vent on the side. And then you see this side, you see a little, um, you don't see anything but the air vent on the top. And then the back probably your back exhaust. There is no uh, like condensation catcher like the Speedy so I don't see any condensation catcher on this cooker here. It doesn't seem to have a need for that. But that's your look around. So now I'm giving you a close-up view of the cooker. 
basically you see the knob here for combi cook or air fry you can switch back and forth there basically when it's on air fry the stuff over here works when you switch it over to combi cooker the stuff over here works and we'll get into the other buttons and features a little later but just going to open up to get inside let you have a look inside see it's a pretty uh, pretty sturdy insulated door there and it's got like the little thing here kind of like the pressure cookers and the, and the ninja speedy there you know so it knows when the pan though and can get the bottom hot the back doesn't have anything so it's just got the rail and it's got a light over there in the corner over there over on this left side there's just nothing but the rails there and then when we lift up to look inside we see up top there we have the big heating coil we have a fan over on the upper left you have the heating I mean the uh, ambient probe upper left is the ambient probe and so basically that's a look inside basically when you're using this cooker you're going to have depending on the cook and the guide can give you all the details but you're usually going to have this in the bottom when you're cooking things on the bottom and that you know like I said holds fluids and pro and not pro fluids and starches and such you can also if you're air frying you can have a crisper rack in there in this lower pan you only use that crisper rack on the lower pan if you're doing any high up cooking or multi-level cooking you can use the bake tray and put that up top there and also if you're doing broiling you wouldn't have the bottom pan necessarily but you would basically have this tray in to do your broiling up top here so like I said inspiration guide or recipe book gives all the details of what to use when but that's how you use all the accessories in the cooker okay so now we have the ninja combi next to the ninja speedy if you have any interest in the speedy there are other videos here on the channel for the speedy full review playlists other cooks there's over 80 cooker reviews or 80 different cookers or over 80 different cookers here on the channel and you can check them all out over 800 other videos including lots of cooks and things of that sort so lots here on the channel you can check out but just a quick side by side of the speedy and the combi the speedy remembers a six quart cooker but we see that the combi is looking a good bit larger and just general size and so I just want to do a little bit of measurement of the outside of both just for comparison's sake and so going across the top we're looking at about maybe just under 13 inches maybe 12 and a quarter across the top of the speedy now the combi let's see right here I'm seeing about yeah, I'm seeing about 15, almost 16 inches going across the top here. Front to back on the Speedy, I'm going from the hump to the end of the handle. I'm seeing 13 inches. Now for the Combi, let's see what I see. I'm seeing 14 inches there. Now let's see what else I can do for measurements. We can do the height. So we see that the combi is, let's see, about 13, a little over 13 inches, while the speedy is, let's see, it's under 13, it's over 12, but under 13. So this kind of gives us an idea of the outside sizes, but going inside, let me just, uh, compare the two pans real quick this is the let's take this big tray out and this is the combi's six quart here I'm going to take the little crisper rack out of it and so we see you know the combi and the speedy you know it's rack I mean it's 
fan can kind of fit in it, but it's higher. The combi is more shallow. So there's a difference there. So about a little bit of banging and clanging. But let's do a little measuring. The combi's pan here is five inches deep. About ten and a half that way. Diagonal. Let's see if I can make it a little longer. It's 13 diagonal. Whereas the combi is just about maybe two and a half inches deep. And this way we've got a little over 12. That way we've got about 10. The speedies is even as far as all sides. Diagonal, you've got about 14 inches. So, big difference there. I mean, with the combi, and because this is a taller cooker to begin with, you probably can fit, well, you can fit bigger things in here. Like they say, you can fit a six inch chicken in here. They don't tell you that here. And when trying a frozen five pound chicken in here, it really wasn't fitting, real, fitting well. So, we know you can fit more on the combi in the speedy but I'm going to take this 9 inch ramekin and this 9 inch ramekin I've used before in the uh, in the speedy just kind of set it in there like that and it works so let's see if it'll work in the combi taking the pan out and my 9 inch ramekin does fit in the combi so could do some you know some work with that in the combi. Now something that didn't fit in the speedy and I'll try in the combi is a metal 9 inch pan with kind of an edge that kind of sticks out a little bit. So let's see if it'll fit in the pan for the combi. It kind of fits. I mean it kind of balances in there. That's a 9 inch round bake pan. It kind of hovers but it does fit. So, sorry for some of that banging, but there it is in there. You can use a 9 inch round bake pan in the combi, but you can't in the speedy, it won't fit. And you can see the original review for details about that. So, we basically have an idea, and it looks like this bake tray is about the same dimensions is the uh, is this other combi pan there so probably about the same size pretty much now <clears throat> inside here I just want to do a front to back measurement inside front to back is 12 inches front to back let's do the side to side let me get the and close the speedy up and kind of, well, I need to fix the pan on the speedy first, but let me just move it out the way. Alright, so now here with the combi, let's see if I can measure inside the door. Yeah, it's 12 inches that way too, so it's 12 inches front to back, 12 inches this way. That's pretty good. And so that's how things stack up next to the Speedy. As I said, the functions between the Combi and the Speedy are very similar. So basically, we'll see how it tests out. But just function speaking, this is looking like a bigger version of the Speedy. The Combi seeming like a bigger, you know, newer model of what the Speedy would do. But we'll see in the testing how this tests out. Now we have the Ninja Foodi XL smart pressure cooker and steam fryer next to the ninja combi and just wanted to give you a general look basically you see that the ninja foodie is taller and of course if you lift the lid up it's even taller than that whereas the combi has the front opening door so you don't have to worry about any more headroom but overall they're kind of similar in size i don't think there's one i'm not going to do measurements but one is not very much larger than the other overall. I think the combi might have a little more width going than the uh, Ninja Foodi, but the Ninja Foodi kind of has this little fin hanging out on the bottom too, so 
kind of sim pretty similar overall in the general size of them. It's just the foodie is just a little taller. And the foodie, I should add, is an 8 quart cooker. And I also need to add that there is a full review of this Ninja Foodie here on the channel. Lots of cooks, full playlists of it as well. Alright, now I want to check if a 5 pound chicken will fit. This is a frozen chicken, so I'm not going to be cooking it in this video, but I will have other cooks later in the video. So, pulling the pan out, got my 5 pound chicken. It's in there. It seems to fit in there just fine. It's, uh, yeah, it's not touching the top. So it does fit. Five pound chicken fits. And so, you know, they say a six pounder will fit. I guess a six pounder will fit too. You know, you might have to maybe, I guess worst case, you'd have to maybe break the back of it to kind of make it kind of stay down a little bit. Maybe even spatchcock it to get it in there. But it looks like it'll fit. All right, so now it's time to do an initial plug-in. So just going to plug things in there and basically there's no fanfare, nothing happens until you press the power button. Then things start to light up. And so I'm going to talk to you about some of these uh, buttons here just so you have an idea of what they do. Of course there's the power button which was just pressed. There's a light button to get a little light action inside. There's a start stop button. When pressing it one time when things are not doing anything, it'll start cooking. If you press it again, it will completely stop to cook. This is not a pause button. Pause is opening the door to auto pause. Function buttons help you switch between functions. So you see, I can only pick the functions on this side. But if I flip this little flip up there, then suddenly I've got access to the functions on the opposite side. Also, we have a temperature slash shade button, which you can use to adjust temperature or shade if you're using toast. Also, there's a time slices button, so you can adjust time or number of slices if you're using toast. So while I'm on the combi cooker side here, I'm going to go through the combi cooker functions. The fun first one is the combi meals function. And that has a temperature range of 250 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 1 to 60 minutes. Next is the, let's go down one, that's the Combi Crisp, 250 degrees Fahrenheit to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, 1 to 60 minutes as well. Next is the Combi Bake function. Combi Bake is also 250 to 450, 1 to 60 minutes. Next is the steam function. Steam has no temperature adjustment and the time, well hold on, the time, let's see it can go up to, we'll see how far, it, maybe it's 60 minutes. We'll see if that's the case. Yeah, so steam can go up to 60 minutes though. Next is proof, if you want to, you know, proof and dough, proof and dough or something. You can do between 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 105 degrees Fahrenheit. You can go from 15 minutes up to 4 hours on proof. The last function is, whoops, turn it back on. Last function is the rice slash pasta function. And basically it just has rice or pasta. So you can choose either rice or you can choose pasta. That's it. You're doing rice or pasta. You don't get to adjust time. It's just rice or pasta. And it does its thing from there. Now, Going over to the air fry slash stove top side of things, there is the air fry function, which goes from 250 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for between 1 to 60 minutes. The next function down is the bake function, and it goes from 300 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 1 to 60 minutes. Next is the broil function. Boil is locked at 450. You can't adjust temperature on boil. It's stuck at 450 and you can do between 1 to 30 minutes. Next is the toast. Well, actually there's a pizza function, sorry. So let me tell you about pizza. The pizza function, um, it basically just says that you should follow the pizza box instructions. It seems like it was made for frozen pizza cooking. 
from how they describe it but basically you can do for time let's see how much time you can do with pizza we'll see if it well it doesn't go very fast so let's just well 30 minutes seems like it goes up to 30 minutes and temperature can go up to let's see we can get up to 450 on temperature for pizza the next function is the toast function and with the toast function you can select your shade your number of slices so number of slices you can do up to four slices that's the max number of slices shade it's like dark medium light that's all you get dark medium or light three choices up to four slices so let's see what the next one here is the next one is sear saute in sear saute you basically have um, a low or two three four or high by your temperature so low one two three four five is high and for you don't get to adjust the uh, time at all the time stays fixed it seems you just basically go as long as you need to go but I think it, it has an auto shut off and so it says that it will automatically shut off when you're using high and four when you're using four and high five uh, it'll run for one hour now if you're using low two or three it can go for up to four hours so just one hour for four and five though now let's go down to the next option is the slow cook option and the slow cook option basically you get uh, it's low or high is what you get for slow cook and you can basically see low high and you can adjust your time now the options for the time on slow cook low can go between 6 to 12 hours high can go between 4 to 12 hours next is sous vide and when you're doing sous vide basically you want to start with a room temperature cooker and you want to use 12 cups of room temperature water you can cook it between 120 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit for up to 24 hours and you should know that this is the first step in cooking when you're doing sous vide you need to finish with a dry heat method like broiling or saute roast or air frying so those are the different functions that the cooker has for the combi cooker and the air fry stove top all right so now it's time to do a temperature test so i'm going to open up here and i'm going to put this uh temperature thermometer oven thermometer inside here just set it on the pan and just put that back in there like that close things up now I'm not going to use like my ambient probe thermometer that has the cord because I don't want this door seems like a pretty solid closed type of door you know what I mean I don't want to use anything that has to come stick out of it and no I'm not I'm not a fan of the uh, wireless thermometer so I'll use this um, but basically I'm going to switch it over to the combi cooker side and basically I'm going to use this combi meals function and you're supposed to use water when you use combi meals but just like I did with the ninja speedy test I'm just testing temperature here just to see what happens and so I'm going to up it to its max which is 450 and yeah like that there I'm going to up time 30 minutes even though I'm probably not going to let it run to 430 but we'll just do this I'm going to go ahead and hit well almost hit power but hit start and it's doing its preheat thing so we'll let it preheat and we'll see if you know we can see what the temperature is inside I guess once it's up to temp I should be able to see what the temperature is I'll probably have to turn the light on the big light on well no actually it's got a light inside of the thing what I'm talking about let me turn the big light on yeah so I'm hoping that you can see with that light on once it reaches temp or whatever I can just periodically show you inside and let you see so for now let's let it do its preheat thing it's not making any noise at all I guess as it's getting itself together but we'll let it do this for now and we'll just see what happens
right, so it just started counting down, and it knocked around my uh, <laughs> knocked around my thermometer. So I have to open up and make it pause just to see the temperature things restarting it. Let's see. All right. It's not very hot. It's just 200. But I'm going to just let that run for a while like that. And we'll just see what happens. And uh, thank God it's still standing up. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. I'll turn it on uh, in a little bit. Well, I guess I'll try and just leave the light on if it'll stay on. And maybe you can see it's moving up pretty quick. It's at a, getting close to, let's see, getting close to 250. Let's go move it up. Alright, so been running for 10 minutes. I think that what it was doing before the actual countdown was just kind of like maybe getting itself ready. It wasn't really preheat. But it's a 450 now, solid. And it's been that way for a while. I'm doing a sound decibel check here. You can see that the um, sound, I'm going to stop talking so you can just see how it measures. It's in the mid 50s. And that's uh, a little, little noisy. Yeah, the mid 50s is a little, little noisy. You're gonna hear that, you know, anytime you're cooking or what have you. But it measures in the mid 50s for sound. Now I'm going to do some feeling around and see if things are hot. Feeling around the cooker. So the door usually, I mean. Every cooker that has a glass door, the front's always hot, so it's a pretty hot thing. On top is cool. I keep my hand there all day. The side here is warm, not hot, but warm. Over here on this side is warm. I would expect if I had uh, water in there and it was steaming out, this would probably be hot. That's usually the case with these steam cookers. The back is just warm, so all the way except for the front. Now down here, the counter is the counter is warm. I mean, it's not hot. I can keep my hand there, but it's warm. There is a little air feels like coming out of the the sides to the bottom. So it's a little warm, but it's not hot. So that's just to kind of give you an idea how it feels around the cooker. Now I'm gonna try like making changes on the fly. So let's say I want to change the yeah, so change the time on the fly. It seems like, yeah, it takes a moment and then it goes ahead and, and takes it in. And so, let's see, if I change the temperature, yeah, I can change the temperature on the fly. So, basically I'm going to, I'm going to stop it now. And, uh, let's see. It defaulted back to 390 when I uh, did that. And it defaults back to 15 minutes. So. It has no memory at all, it just defaults back to its default settings. So that's uh, something to know whenever you do a cook. You're going to have to uh, basically do the same settings again. We see when I open the door that it did pause, so the, the uh, door does pause when you open the door. So that's how things work out. I'm going to do a burn off. With any cooker you need to do a burn off. Doesn't matter if it's conventional or countertop, they're all made in factories, they're all going to have a smell. So you want to use like the hottest temperature you can for like maybe 20-30 minutes. So I'll do a burn off and then come back and show you some more. So now I'm going to do a toast test. I've let things cool down a good bit, which takes a very long while. I mean even after 30 minutes with the door open and nothing in there, even with the pan out, the plate on the bottom is still hot. So, you know, that thing is still got some heat on it, but I've let things cool down a good bit. So I've got two slices of my almond flour whole wheat bread here, homemade recipes here on the channel of how to make it. It's a lot more resilient than store-bought bread, but with a sliced butter and a sliced nut butter going to try toast, you're supposed to just put it in there in that pan like I just did. And so going over to the air fry side, 
and going down to the toast function let's see here we got toast I'm going to go dark and I'm going to go for the maximum of four slices and see what happens so seven minutes twelve seconds we'll let things cook up and we'll see what happens All right, it's all done. Let's see what happened. See if I can get things out without making any mess or anything. This is the buttered slice. Looks pretty good. And this is our non-buttered slice here. Got a pretty good toasting. Let's see if the back got any toasting. And yes, the back got a lot of toasting. Looks pretty good. So using that pan on the bottom ensures that both sides get toasted because the pan gets hot so that's pretty good all right what I'm mixing up here is some raspberry almond flour square dough and I'll flash the recipe on screen for a brief moment but it's basically going to be using the combi bake feature see how that works out it's kind of like a steam baking almost type of cook. I'm going to try and use a, a 9 inch bake pan in there and see how it all works out. Ninja does make their own pan for it but I didn't pay for that and I'm going to see how it rolls using this method that I've devised. Basically you think I'll take a cup of water put it into the pan that's down there. Oops, spill my water a little bit. Basically, pour that water in there. Let me put this out. Make sure I get the water in there good. Alright. I guess I'll just leave it kind of setting out a little bit so it's easier to rest the pan in there. But now that I've got the dough together, I'm just going to real quick get the dough into this 9 inch bake pan, metal 9 inch bake pan, and then just set it in there and start cooking. Alright, so we got the batter all together there, you see it. And just kind of let it rest on the edges there. Let it set in the waters of the pan. Just close it up. And now I'm going to put it up on the combi cooker, turn things on. Gonna go down to that combi bake function. So there's combi bake, 350. For the cooking time, I'm going to be keeping an eye on it. I'm setting it to 20, but I'll stop it earlier if it needs to be stopped earlier. So, I'm going to let that go ahead and run. Bring you back when it looks like it's done. Alright, so although this shows just a few minutes of cook time, it has been going for probably 20 minutes or more already. It's like when you put the water in and you have it start up, it really is doing like a full preheat. There's steam that has been coming out of the steam release up here a lot during the warm-up phase but it's basically been cooking as things have been warming up in there and you know I don't even know if it's going to need 10 minutes cooking. We'll see but I doubt it will need the full 20. So I'm going to let it just keep on cooking and I'll bring you on back in a moment but so far it's looking like it's going pretty well. Alright, it's been going for 8 minutes of cook time, but like I said, the warm-up was a lot longer. I just want to check it out, because I think things might be done or near done at this point. Might need a little more time. I'm going to let it go for that 2 more minutes, and then I think I'm going to pull it. So, basically, let it go for 10 minutes of cook time, and then I think I'll pull it out. So I'll bring you back in a couple minutes. Alright, so after 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and stop with that. And just see what I've got here. So, I'm trying to carefully get that boiling. All the water that was in the bottom has basically evaporated and steamed away. So it's basically like all your fluid steams away and things just cook after that but that's the finished product. I'm going to set it aside to cool. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do a combi meal. And basically what I've got here, this is two cups of quinoa with a couple of tablespoons of butter. Just throwing that right there in the big old pan there. And going to need three and a half cups of water. So this is one cup. Two cups. Third cup. And that final half cup goes in there. We'll slide the pan. Oh, actually, I forgot vegetables. Got some carrots here, so I'm just uh, dropping the carrots right there in the quinoa, right in the middle of that. See those there? The butter will probably get mixed up in there eventually as things cook up. And for protein, I've got a couple salmon fillets seasoned with some obey. Got some extra light olive oil on them in there. Don't confuse extra light olive oil for other types of olive oil. It's got a higher smoke point. Alright, so I'm going to go up to Calvi Meals. I'm going to do 350. And I'm going to bring it, yeah, 15 minutes, 350. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and let that run. And I'll bring you back when I think it's done. Alright, so things have been cooking for the 15 minutes cook time plus the whole preheat time which took kind of, kind of almost 10 minutes of, I guess, the preheat warm up time. And the fish, I forgot to mention, was fully frozen. Those salmon fillets were fully frozen to start. So, I think we need to remember when they say that you can have a meal done in 15 minutes, you need to include like a 10 minute or so warm up time, it might be more, this cooker was already warm from the previous cook when I started this one so it could take, you know, like I said, I thought it took maybe 20 minutes when I did uh, the almond flour squares. The fish is still a little undercooked, just a little bit, it's almost done. Probably should have done like, well it works hot, glass is hot. But um, probably should have done like 17 minutes, probably would have got it. I'm just going to do two more minutes. And just let it go for a couple more minutes. And I know about carryover. I've, like I said, hundreds of cooks on this channel. I just, I'm not into that. I like to cook mine all the way, but bring it back in a couple minutes. Alright, so basically it'll been 17 minutes total. And Florida will and all of you fully cooked now. So let's see what we got. Open up here. And none of the smoke comes out during the cook. I've had zero smoke issues during cooks. Just the steam comes out. Yeah, 140. Yeah, it's in the one low 150s now. Yeah, and that one's like in the 190s. That one's super hot. But I'm going to, let's see, I want to get some of the quinoa out first. Let's see if I can get down there to the quinoa. If I can have trouble getting my hand under there to slide it in. There we go. And carrots. So there you go, quinoa and carrots. Looks good. I'm just going to Boom myself out some of that. That looks good. You can tell me what you think about how that looks too. That's the quinoa out. Now I'm going to try and get these salmon fillets out. So I'll put this one here. I think the skin's a little stuck to the bottom. That's okay. 
Okay. Whoa, dropped my fish. Oh well. Flip my fish over. <laughs> Little mishap there, but there we go. Quinoa salmon. And I'm gonna let it just cool down for a moment. I'll get the rest on out while this cools down for a brief moment. Alright, so turn the light on so you can see pretty well. And just going to get a piece of fish off here. A little of that quinoa. And uh, thank God for this. And let's taste. Still hot. Super. Sorry, super moist. And I mean super moist. That steaming makes it super moist, so I'm gonna try to carry it. Mm-hmm. Turn, turned out good too. Turned out great. Really turned out great. I'm gonna hold on, get a plate, and try this uh, dessert. See how these raspberry almond flour squares turned out. Give it a spatula to get that out of there. So let's see how this did. Should be cooled down well enough now. Alright, so you see the side of that? See that? I'll just show you inside the pan how it looks in there. Thank God for this. Do a bite, taste of this. Mm -hmm. Very good stuff. Everything turned out excellent. All right, so let's talk about cleaning the cooker. Basically, you want to clean after every use. The combi pan, crisper tray, and bake tray can be washed in the dishwasher. And they have a deep cleaning option if you ever want to use that. But for regular cleaning, you just want to use like a wet soapy cloth and wipe things down. And, and then use a wet one to wipe things off to clean it off. And don't use anything abrasive. But for the deep cleaning, you can fill the combi pan with three cups of water. Use the combi cooker steam setting for ten minutes. And then wipe things down clean after that. Alright, let's talk about the warranty. Cooker comes with a one year limited warranty, and just like the Ninja Speedy, they'll cover the cost of the cooker getting shipped to them. But for you to get it back, it's going to be at least a $20.95 fee. Basically, say $20.95 fee subject to change, and I doubt that change is going to go down, in my opinion. But that's basically the warranty for one year. And basically the cooker did very well. I very much like how it turned out. Very much like the Ninja Speedy, but bigger. And so that's cool. Everything turned out well. And being able to use a 9-inch bake pan in there turned out good too. Not having to buy any extra accessories for it. And kind of jerry-rig it a little bit, but it works out. And so nothing in this video was sponsored. Nothing given to me. Nothing in any of the over 800 videos in this channel same case and so in the video description are lots of ways to help the channel such as my cookbook merch membership donations link to the amazon shop where you can get this cooker and others pay the same price help the channel also on my blog you can go to superwaveovenrecipes.com that's superwaveovenrecipes.com there's buy me a coffee link there that you can also use to support the channel and so with all of that said if you did like the video Please do give it a thumbs up, share the video with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification icon, and good eating.